Okay, the countdown has begun for the mega counting that will take place across four battleground states with as many as 638 assembly constituencies at stake today. It's the fastest counting day updates that you will get here on India Today with Rahul and me. So there's plenty to look forward to, but that's the big story. Four states, 638 assembly seats and a lot at stake for all the major parties. And I want to take a moment, Rajdeep, to introduce all the viewers who are joining us this morning to the election intelligence dashboard. This is EI 3.0. From the day the Karnataka results came out, the India Today team has been working day and night on getting this analytics engine going. And you've heard before this Modi ki guarantee, you've heard of Congress's guarantees. It is the guarantee of the India Today group that this analytics dashboard is going to blow your mind. When counting starts at 8 a.m. and when the results are coming in, there is, you know, there's so much talk about AI, AI, artificial intelligence. This is election intelligence. It's the most sophisticated, high-end, high-quality analytics dashboard, which will help you make sense of the numbers as they come in in real time. The kind of cuts we can do with the data unprecedented. If you were a, a PhD in cephalogy or if you were an analyst at some university, it would take you weeks ordinarily to put together the kind of insights that the election intelligence dashboard can bring out in real time for our viewers. So I hope uh, and we'll try our best to de-jorganize this and to simplify it as much as possible so you have some fun with the numbers as well. It's not just Rajdeep and Pradeep will be dancing today. The numbers will be dancing on your screen as well. And uh, this is a lot of effort coming together on counting day. And I hope that you really feel the pulse and enjoy this as much as we've enjoyed trying to bring this together for you. Rajdeep, what's at stake today? Uh, the big picture. You know, the big picture, uh, Rahul, is I think there's a lot at stake for both the major parties. For the Congress in particular, and I'm not going to use that word semi-final because I don't believe there are any semi-finals in politics. There's no prizes for... Uh, you saw what happened in 2018. The Congress won three of these five states and yet was comprehensively beaten in Lok Sabha. India won everything till the semi-final and lost the final. That's so right. So the, I, semi-finals I'm not gonna, have no bearing on the final. I don't use the word semi-final, but there is a lot at stake. For the Congress, for example, there is an, the importance of maintaining the momentum of what happened in Himachal and Karnataka and proving that in the Hindi heartland in particular, in a direct fight, you can defeat the BJP. I think that is critical for the Congress to prove. Also, in Telangana, it's important to prove that... You, Karnataka was not a flash in the pan, you can move further down south. For the BJP also, I think it's important to show that it is still the number one party of the Hindi heartland. Uh, it is also not a party entirely dependent on Prime Minister Modi. It can even win when the Prime Minister is not on the ticket. And I think for the BRS, it's also a matter of an existential do or die crisis because you're a party which is located in this one state can you retain your bastion? So I think from all perspectives and also for the Congress to become a mascot for the India Alliance heading up to 2024. So plenty at stake, Rahul, for Typically, each of Rajdeep, the key players. In states where the Congress is lost to a regional power, it's found it very difficult to bounce back. So if the exit polls are correct and the Congress does win Talangana, that would be a very strong pushback because the party was out in the wilderness, politically in Telangana, post the Karnataka results, they've bounced back. Can they beat the BRS? That's one. Remember also, since 1993, no chief minister in Rajasthan has been repeated. If Ashok Gehloth comes back, he would be not just coming back to power in Rajasthan, he'd be upsetting the political uh, trend for three decades that's existed. And since 2014, no Congress government in the Modi Raj has ever got re-elected. That's right, 2013, not since 2013. So once Mr. Modi took over in 2014, no one's so got... Mukul Sangma, That's right. Ibobi Singh in 2012, Tarun Gogoi in 2011. After that, no Congress chief minister has got re-elected. Also importantly, 62 of the 65 seats of North India in Lok Sabha were won by the BJP in Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh and Rajasthan. So for the BJP, it's a platform win this to make yourself even stronger building up to 2024. In that sense, I think... The big mo, as they call in sports, momentum will be important depending on what happens today. Chetan Bhagat's also joining us, looking very natty. 
Thank you. Chetan, what, what have you done? You know, you what do you do? Facial aesthetics? You do hey, something Ram. to make yourself look Early young. in the morning. Look at how young he looks. All yeah. Botox. No, it's your makeup room. Just <laughs> spend five minutes there. But uh, I agree with you what you said about the election, in case we can discuss the elections. Uh, is that I am reminded, you know, of uh, Satya Nadella said this uh, when they launched ChatGPT about Google. Um, and, and Google had to immediately launch BARD and all those things. And he said, we made the 900 pound gorilla dance. And I think Congress has to make the 900 pound gorilla dance today. They have to do really well because in the Lok Sabha, 5% at least advantage. Like, it's a different game. BJP is at an advantage. Now Virat Kohli has come in the team. It's Modi's election. Here, they better do so well to say that we are ready for the Lok Sabha. So, okay. they Ashok have Malik, to make the gorilla dance. What's at stake from a BJP perspective? The Congress's pride is at stake. From the BJP's perspective, what's at stake? Ashok. You know, oh, sorry. <clears throat> so, you see, uh, if you look at this as a run-up to the Lok Sabha election and in comparison to last time, in 2018, the BJP lost all three states in... Uh, it lost Madhya Pradesh, of course, it formed a government later. It lost Rajasthan, it lost Chhattisgarh. These are uh, BJP uh, regions, BJP bastions. Uh, these are areas the BJP has to sweep in order to come back to power with the majority in 2024. So it would try... Uh, it would want to regain some of its lost strength here. So it would actually want to win back Madhya Pradesh, as the polls suggest. It would want to do well in, in Chhattisgarh, and it would, it would want to win Rajasthan. In fact, if it loses Rajasthan, the BJP will be disappointed. Dear yes, Sudhir, what's at stake? I'm going to go in a moment to Telangana because the action has already yeah. begun there early. Lots of buzz about how P.K. Shivkumar is claiming that the BRS and the BJP also are uh, threatening to poach their MLA. So it seems that Telangana... Uh, there are those who still believe it could be a hung assembly. Oh, yes. I think plan R is in place, which is planned resort. They would be moved to a resort either on the outskirts of Bengaluru or at least in a hotel in Hyderabad. But yesterday, the social media cell of the BRS had put out a poster saying KCR 3.0 loading. So we don't know whether the KCR software is going to get an extension of another But nobody years. since MGR in the South has won three successive elections. MGR did. And KCR came to power on the back of the promise of the creation of a state of Telangana. That check has already been encashed. Does he have more in the bank to be able to get the voters of Telangana to vote for him again? Let's get in a word also from uh, Rahul Verma. National big picture, in your view, what's at stake? I think uh, for BJP, they should uh, be looking at winning at least Rajasthan and maybe Madhya Pradesh. Those are two critical states for them. Uh, for Congress, uh, retaining Chhattisgarh and making an entry in Telangana would be very, very important. If they manage to win uh, either of Madhya Pradesh and uh, Rajasthan, that should be really, really good for uh, them going in 2024. Piti, what are you most looking forward to today? Well, you know, to see, like I said, what a song ground really does reflect uh, in the numbers and our exit polls. I think for the Congress, it's really important, Rajdeep that they turn the tide in Rajasthan. If they do, it's a big momentum for them. Where Telangana comes into question, you know, with what I said the last time around, you know, this is possibly, I see, as the first election where Rahul Gandhi is also on the ticket. Maybe not officially, but yeah. he's also on the ticket in Telangana. <clears throat> so if they win big in Telangana, I think a lot of credit will go to Rahul Gandhi. So he needs this, you know, individually. Yes. Uh, Rashid? Uh, yes, Rajdeep, I think Priti is absolutely right. It is Rahul Gandhi, uh, you know, in Telangana at, at stake. Is that Mohabbat ki dukaan, is it making big impact that will lead to another round of yatra from east to west. So if south is sort of, so, so, so to say, for secure for India alliance, they'll move to, you know, from east to west so that, you know, east is also isolated from BJP.